Land from PNC Park this afternoon. The Pirates welcome in the Cincinnati Reds, the front runners in the National League Central Division on this Memorial Day 2012. Sun is shining. It is hot. The Reds are playing hot baseball. So are the Pirates coming off the sweep at the hands of the Chicago Cubs here at PNC Park. This nine-game homestand continues as the Pirates welcome in the Reds for the first of three. The Mets began the homestand, and then the Cubs, and now Cincinnati. They were already in town earlier this month and took two of three against the Pirates. As you can see, it is a hot, steamy afternoon. Let's take a look at our Barrel Automotive League leaders and National League Central Division standings. The Cardinals, as you see, have been in first place most of the season. But for the Reds, they have been in first place five days. Those are the current standings. Dusty Baker's Reds had a big day yesterday at home in Cincinnati against the Colorado Rockies where the ball was jumping out of that ballpark. And Steve, that might be a theme for this series. The, the Reds are a, a power-laden club especially at Great American Ballpark, but things are a bit neutralized here when you talk about PNC Park and the 2012 edition of James McDonald, keeping the ball in the ballpark. Absolutely. You know, the pitching of the Pirates overall should be a factor to maybe uh, tone down that offensive uh, machine that the, the Reds have. I don't think it's quite uh, labeled the big red machine yet, but it's heading that way with the way they're hitting this year. But McDonald has been terrific. Uh, I think he's growing up. He's maturing. He's gaining confidence. When you have the kind of live arm that James has, uh, all you need to do is put some successful starts together and say, you know, I, I not only have a good arm, but I'm learning how to pitch. And I'm getting a gut feel of how to pitch. I'm, I'm starting to get it of how you can win and perhaps win consistently at the major league level. So he's been on a wonderful roll. The month of May, four starts, an ERA of even even two uh, two point zero zero. That that is even. He's two and one in the month of May. He could be four and oh the way he's pitched. So uh, you don't want James McDonald to change a thing. Just go out there and Keep on trucking. Don't outthink yourself, James, and let those good pitching instincts carry along. It is a challenge because this is not the Cubs. This is a very, very good baseball team, and they are in first place. But I will go back to yesterday. As important as sweeping the Cubs was, I think yesterday's offense was just as important to realize that these guys are capable of doing that. They needed that kind of game. Well, and, and again, the long ball, kind of a theme. The, the Reds and Rockies were hitting the ball out of Great American Ballpark yesterday. The Pirates were doing it to the Cubs here at PNC Park. First three-run homer of the season to set the stage for the game. Take a look at the Reds lineup. And you saw Dusty Baker's club 27-20 and 20 coming into this one. Drew Stubbs leads off and it's shortstop Wilson Valdez. Zach Cozart gets the day off. Joey Votto is at first. Brandon Phillips the cleanup man. Jay Bruce in right. Chris Heisey in left field. At third base it's the veteran Miguel Cairo as Todd Frazier also gets the afternoon off. Ryan Hannigan behind the plate and then Bronson Arroyo. James McDonald numbers brought to you by the Western PA Chevy dealers. And the Reds, as you take a look at his numbers, got a taste of this updated James McDonald when they were here at the beginning of the month of May when James went six and a third innings, got into the seventh inning, giving up just one run in his win against the Reds on May 5th. So they've got an idea what he's all about. They've probably watched video uh, as a result of that game or as a result of any game. So uh, nothing new. I, I don't think they're going to see a new James McDonald. They might have seen a different McDonald last year but this year uh, this guy is a different pitcher simple as that and you talk about the long ball it seems like when the weather heats up and it gets really warm the ball wants to jump now it jumps all the time in the great American ballpark but uh, we'll see if that plays into the equation this afternoon not much of a wind trailing and you know, we'll see see what happens to the baseball if it stays in the yard but you're right James just two home runs given up these first nine starts. Excellent here at home, a 157 ERA at PNC Park. Jose Tabata, they uh, tested out his leg this morning. He was pulled from the game with the cramping and discomfort in the left leg. In the sixth inning yesterday, he was taken out. So he is back in there playing left field this afternoon. See what uh, the Pirates have to offer against the Reds in this three game series. Cincinnati. Took two of three from the Pirates. 
here earlier this month and we're underway at strike one on Drew Stubbs. 88 degrees at game time. And a one ball one strike count on Stubbs. There's what you call a major league base. Breaking ball inside. And we've been focusing on this much this season about McDonald and his arsenal. And this part of it right there, a good fastball. Not only good life on it, but in a great spot, picking up the outside corner. Let's see if that uh, bears out from what we saw with the naked eye. Yeah, right there. Tough pitch to do anything with. And a tougher pitch. That's going up here. and away. Strikes out Drew Stubbs. The strikeout pitch for McDonald has been a big part of his success. So sometimes you don't need these guys behind James McDonald. Jose Tabata, Andrew McCutcheon, Garrett Jones in the outfield. The corners, Matt Haig, Andrew Alvarez, Clint Barmas, and short Neil Walker. And second, Josh Harrison gets the day off. Ron Barajas has become James McDonald's catcher, as uh, is the case with A.J. Burnett. Found out of play by Wilson Valdez. Ron Barajas has caught every start for James McDonald since April the 30th. Showing bunt takes a fastball outside one ball and one strike. Well, good numbers uh, in his brief career so far against the Reds four and one with an ERA of well under three. Fastball upstairs one and two. One of his uh, wins. Against Cincinnati May the fifth the one game the Pirates won in that series he went six and a third gave up a run on six hits. Pirates winning the game three to two. What do we want here? We want the breaking ball. And the curve ball, not the slider. Two is the curve ball. You usually hit three for the slider. Wiggle for a change. Those are traditional. Now, there are variations off that uh, base set of signs. But there's no mistake in that one. That's heat. And that's another strikeout. You know they talk about wanting to put the ball in play being efficient and everything but you know there's something real two things good about strikeouts first of all they're exciting second of all nothing bad can happen after you strike the guy out exactly I mean, he's done and the ball's not in yeah. the air it's not on the ground it's over so the, the strikeouts are good yeah, he's getting a bunch of them lately the AGH cam shows you in slow motion James McDonald that strikeout pitch Struck out a career high 11 on May the 17th in Washington. Last six starts, he has struck out 54 batters and a base hit for Joey Votto. We shouldn't be surprised with that. No, he's he's good all the way around. Batting average, home runs, RBIs. He's good. Came in a 316 career hitter against McDonald. And with a 325 batting average tied for ninth in the National League. He's up there and on base and slugging second on base second slugging. First and extra base hits. And he is not afraid to show you his emotions either. He'll snap every once in a while. <laughs> now Brandon Phillips. Breaking ball in the dirt way out in front. Brandon says, I'm going to go up there and catch up with that fastball right away. But he didn't get it. He and uh, Joey Votto and Jay Bruce and Todd Frazier all hit home runs yesterday in Cincinnati. The Reds and Rockies combined to hit nine. The new Great American Ballpark record. Votto will sneak you a bag once in a while. It's three steals and three attempts. Brandon Phillips six out of 15 lifetime against James McDonald 400 career batting average. Versus J Mac another throw over. J 
Joey Votto the line single to center. Owen one. Grounded to Alvarez. He'll throw to second. <laughs> Nothing for the Reds are at, after a half an inning. Now Bronson Arroyo takes the hill for Cincy. Beautiful Memorial Day wins out of the Southwest at eight. Pirates lineup is brought to you by Toyota. Moving forward, Jose Tabata, Neil Walker, Andrew McCutcheon, Pedro Alvarez, four runs batted in yesterday, the most for him since September 2010 against the Marlins. Garrett Jones returns to the starting lineup with Matt Haig making another start at first base. Rod Barajas, Clint Barmas, James McDonald for the Bucks against. Former Pirate Bronson Arroyo. We can say the veteran Bronson Arroyo because we knew him when he was a rookie with the Pittsburgh Pirates. His 11th Major League season, he has won over 100 Major League games, six of them against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Strike on Tabata. In the whole 0 and 2. Bronson Arroyo has given up eight home runs in his first nine starts last year. 46 home runs to lead the major leagues in that category. Gave up a bunch. That's a big number, 46. Routed toward the middle, but Phillips, the gold glover, has it. And when he gets it, he gets it. Rivers Dick Casino tips to win. See what we have from Steve. Veer away from Votto. You already got an early taste. Let McDonald be just James. In other words, don't mess with him right now. He's on that good a roll. Just give him the ball and say, go get him, James. And uh, let's do what we did yesterday. Rinse and repeat. Get some offense. Rivers Casino tips to win. Here's Neil Walker. A strike. Two fifty eight hitter. Bill Walker has hit safely in eight of his last nine games against the Reds, going back to last year. The team against whom he made his major league debut. Walker was one for three with an RBI single yesterday, plus a walk and a run scored. Two and one. Arroyo has walked only seven batters unintentionally this season. In nine starts. 1.2 walks per nine innings. That's the best rate in the league. 
and you, you look beyond those numbers Greg and it can tell you some different things. First of all you can say well I better be ready to swing early because he throws a lot of strikes but here's a guy that can start you off and get behind in the count just trying to make his pitch and then come back and get you. So there's two sides to that coin. Well, here's a situation he's down in the count three and one and rip to right. It's another side of a three sided coin. These guys with great control, they will throw the ball down the middle rather than issue a walk at times. I was going to ask you that. If, if that doesn't become almost the mindset that, you know, you become known as this great control pitcher where you don't walk anybody, so now it's almost a vendetta. I'm not going to walk anybody regardless. I'd rather give up a hit. Yeah. And, and it's not a bad thought process because. You know, you're going you're gonna to put the ball in play. There's no uh, guarantee you're going to get a base hit, but you might get a little better pitch to swing at than you normally would because this guy does not want to walk you. That's right. Those kind of guys hate to give up free passes, and they'll give you something to hit because of that. And the numbers we talked about there is the Arroyo leading the league. Oh. McCutcheon checks his swing and takes a strike. He is just one for 16 against Bronson Arroyo. You look at some lifetime numbers, and Every it just doesn't compute. You don't <laughs> yeah. get it for whatever reason. Yeah. Arroyo owns McCutcheon. Those things happen, and, and it's hard to explain them. One for 16. The one hit a home run. And both principals will tell yeah. you it's yeah. hard to explain. Bronson and Andrew. Career batting average of 0.63. And I bet one of the reasons, if you examine those at bats. Is that big slop curveball that he'll throw every once in a while? They'll have you way out in front. This is 301st Major League start out of Brooksville, Florida. Dribbler foul, and now one and two. No longer does a, an opposing third baseman even think about McCutcheon bunting. Now that he's an established three hole hitter and what with his eight homers tied for the team lead 25 RBIs. In a situation over the early part of the weekend where there was runners on first and second in a tight ball game Andrew came up with nobody out. The question might have arisen is he going to move him over. No it's, it's just not going to happen these days. Ball two strike count and McCutcheon steps out. In terms of the running game, Arroyo has done a real good job the last couple of years in keeping those runners from stealing against the Reds. This ball will be a tough play, but handled smoothly by the veteran Cairo. Quick exchange from the glove to the throwing hand. This was not an easy play. It's an easy play to rush. Major League play. Turned by a Major League veteran. And get the out of third base, first base. Miguel Cairo. Scott Rowland, by the way, on the disabled list and not expected back anytime soon. Now Walker at second for Pedro Alvarez. He owns a modest five game hitting streak. Shoulder issues for Roland again. And that's been chronic for several years. Shift on as the shortstop plays almost directly behind second and a fly ball to right field. That's going to hook foul. Towering drive and close to being deep enough. Make it homers in back to back games for Pedro Alvarez with the three run first inning home run yesterday. He is two for six lifetime against Arroyo with one of those hits being a homer. So you can, you're saying that it's okay for him to back off a little bit and hit a two run shot sure, sure. today in the first. That's allowed. Allow Walker to go to third. Off Hannigan's mitt. Wild pitch. Didn't know if it's going to be a WP or a PB. WP it is. Not a pass ball. 
Walker there. And a count of one ball and one strike. Nothing wrong with picking up where we left off yesterday when the Pirates scored 10. Rinse and repeat. Do it again. Just the second wild pitch thrown this season by Arroyo. Great control numbers. And now it's one ball and two strikes. Yeah, you want a little reminder? Bottom of the first. Three nothing pilots. So you do it money for nothing and your bombs for free. Mm -hmm. One and two. Not close for that fastball. Two balls and two strikes on Pedro Alvarez. Eighth home run of the season yesterday and now with 23 RBIs two behind McCutcheon for the team lead. And Bronson Arroyo these days is not going to dazzle you with his fastball. It's going to be in the high 80s, 87 to 90, probably that range for Bronson. He's logged a lot of starts, as we said, over 300 as of today. A lot of innings along the way. 35 years old, Bronson Arroyo out of Key West, Florida. The Pirates chose him in the third round of the 1995 draft. It was his career numbers. He bounced uh, back and forth between the rotation and the bullpen. Parts of three seasons with Pittsburgh. Grew up just above Tampa, Brooksville. Three and two. I can see him being in Key West now. He does a little singing, entertaining. And it stays three balls and two strikes. Yeah, born there in the Keys. Parents. Uh, Lived down there. Named him after the actor Charles Bronson. <laughs> on deck is G.I. Jones on this Memorial Day. The Pirates and the Reds meeting in game one of the three game series. Another 3 2 pitch and a foul ball and Hannigan not able to hang on. Life as the ball trickles out of the glove late. Part of the luck involved in baseball. Yeah. The ball sticks in that mitt. It's out number three, but you get another shot here. Remember Joe Brown telling the stories about Smokey Burgess yep. holding on to foul tips. Yeah, just had the net. Reserve strikes. Yep. Reserve strikes and strikeouts. And deep to left toward the line, nearing the wall, off the wall. Pedro Alvarez, an opposite field double. And the Pirates lead one to nothing. The strength of the big man. And I'll tell you, he did not miss much by sneaking that ball inside the foul pole. That ball hit well up on the padding. Another foot and a half, two feet. He's got that two run home run to the opposite field, and that's just all arms. You're exactly right. The strength, ladies and gentlemen, of Pedro Alvarez. That close. Oh. That close. Oh, oh. Less than a foot. My goodness. Strong like bull, Pedro Alvarez. Here at Jones now. He doubled the season for Alvarez and the Pirates strike in the first inning again. Jones homered yesterday, his fifth. And Steve mentioned the home runs uh, almost that close, being the ninth allowed by Bronson Arroyo after giving up all those home runs last year. Steve mentioned 46. The, the, the record is in the like earlier mid 50s. I mean, he's not too far away. I think Wyland gave up 
over 50 one year. Yeah, he was the only second pitcher in history to give up at least 40 homers, allowing fewer than 50 walks. Robin Roberts did it. Hall of Famer 1956 and 57. As you're a control pitcher, strike, strike throw, you're going to give up some home runs. Yep. Fly 11, another example. All fouled away, and it's 0 and 2 on Garrett Jones. Pedro Alvarez getting the double off the wall and left. And the numbers now for Arroyo last season. An ERA of 507. Two years ago, a 17 game winner. And into right field. Alvarez waved. Here's the throw to the plate. Will not get him. Jones singles home Alvarez, and it's 2 0 in the first. Love that two out offense. Pedro, Garrett. Action. Garrett Jones, his 15th RBI, strong enough to get it past the infield. Between Phillips and Votto. And really no choice, no uh, chance for Bruce. Right, and uh, of course you're helped with a two-out situation. Any contact, you're running. So he gets that uh, initial extra two or three steps that you might not normally get. Good stuff. Didn't have to slide in back of the catcher like he did earlier in the weekend. Pedro Alvarez. Remember he was that close to striking out the ball barely out of Hannigan's mitt and look what has happened since. Pirates get two runs. Still going with Haig at the plate. 0 and 2. scored 14 runs in the first 46 games this season. Five first inning runs in the last two in the first inning. First inning runs for the Pirates. Jones barely off the bag. Matt Haig's fourth straight start since being called up from AAA and pops this ball up. Brandon Phillips underneath it for the final out. Pirates strike first. A pair of runs. Double for Alvarez brought home Walker. Jones brought home Pedro. Sports is brought to you by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. 
by your Toyota dealer, where quality, dependability, and good MPG all come standard. Toyota, moving forward. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. Welcome back. Hey, happy 90th, Mom. Go Bucks. And uh, hi to Diana and Kobe. Wolf, wolf. Indeed. Wolf, wolf, whoops. Clear the deck. It's the author of that phrase, I think, on that boat. Aaron and the boys. And the gals, strike is called on Jay Bruce. 11 homers, 30 runs batted in. You can bet there's a few people in the waters around western Pennsylvania and the rivers. It's a great day for boating and swimming. Watching Major League Baseball. One and two. Wow. Yeah. Pirate Armada there, huh? That's some action. Something happened over the PA system moments ago, and time was called. As the pitch was coming in, so some confusion there. Now, James is having a little discussion with home plate umpire. Why did you shut everything down? James is saying. And now he gets the explanation and he's going to be fine. Nance Barksdale is the home plate umpire. Right there, you hear the PA open up and Time was called by Jay Bruce. So it's one ball and two strikes on Bruce. Shift on three infielders on the right side and lined into center field over the head of Clint Barmas. There's a lot of talk about Joey Votto, and there should be with his package of numbers, but Jay Bruce, 11 home runs, he is capable of doing damage. Get the ball like that. Uh, your shift has to place people exactly in the path of the baseball. Lead off hit to center for Bruce. His 11 homers tied for fourth most in the league. Carlos Beltran of the Cardinals. Leads the senior circuit with 15 and now the batter Chris Heisey. Adding 277 this season. Dusty Baker kind of shuffling him and Ryan Ludwig in and out of left field. 0 and 2 now on Heisey. Remember Ryan Ludwig? Ludwig spent uh, part of last season with Pittsburgh, signed as a free agent by the Reds. Yes. Struggling in terms of batting average, but he has five home runs. Heisey lays off one ball, two strikes. Heisey has displayed some tremendous power in their organization since being signed out of central Pennsylvania. Good career numbers against the Bucks. Rounds this to third, chance for two. There's one and two. Well, the Pirates are getting that down uh, this homestand, aren't they? Well, they are. And uh, right around the horn, it's a little more routine when you involve the middle guys. But I'll tell you, one of the keys is that Pedro Alvarez has a strong yeah. arm and he doesn't back off. I mean, he puts some mustard on his throws to second base, and five-four-three involves two long throws, longer than the, the middle guys would be involved with, and. I think that's one of the keys that he doesn't back off with the speed with which he gets the ball to second base. Heisey is not slow, so that had to be perfect. And uh, along with throwing it hard, you got to be accurate because you can wind up really making it difficult for your second baseman. So you want to hit him chest high. And Pedro has been delivering good feeds to Neil Walker. I don't know on Miguel Cairo hitting 143. And just to clean up some uh, 
housework. Uh, Burt Weiland gave up 50 home runs in 1986. And that was just in front of or behind 46. Right next to that 50 in both of those numbers led the league and home runs given up. To center field McCutcheon makes the catch. Lead off single double play fly out Pirates lead two nothing after one and a half. That, 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 that we're free and, and, we, and we live in this country, you know, it, it's all because of them. So, uh, you know, playing on these days, day games, uh, having the fans out here and, you know, just enjoying themselves, you know, it's a tribute to them and, uh, you know, and, 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 you know, we just thank them and, and you know, uh, and, you know, just, just go out there and play baseball and then let people forget about, you know, what's going on in the world and, and uh, you know, enjoy the game. Rod Barajas talking about Memorial Day, and he will lead things off here in the bottom of the second with the Pirates on top two to nothing. Barajas hitting a 219, four homers, eight RBIs. Takes a strike. Last 11 games hitting at a 368 clip. And like McCutcheon, struggles against Arroyo. 0 for 11 lifetime against Bronson Arroyo. Oh, Royal is kind of interesting to watch because he's got that high leg kick fastball kind of traditional but the breaking ball he'll kind of sling it almost like he's really exaggerating the, the wrist action to get more spin on the ball so it's like a like a slinging release gunslinger See that leg come up straight up there we go yep that's Bronson Royal all the way. Roundhouse curveball. He'll use that with varying speeds. Cracked sharply. Oh. Another nice grab. Boy, that was some nice catches. Mm -hmm. This home stand as well. Good reactions down the left field line. Blaze Laboon, yep. one of our favorites. Looking good, Blaze. Yep. She gets a star. I mean, I don't want to incorporate Blaze Star, but Blaze Laboon made a good play. One of the great baseball names. No question. Yep. At any ballpark, Blaze Laboon. Yep. A ball and two strikes on Barajas. 
leading off of the Bucks here in the second. Barmas to follow. Fouls off another. Knocked in the only run of the game on Friday night. The Pirates one nothing win. Four homers last 13 games. Another foul. Our Barajas is right up on top of home plate. His elbows, if you went straight down from his elbows, are not too far away from that inside corner. He wants to take that outside corner away from the pitcher. So if he goes out there, he can still get the good part of the bat on it instead of just the end of the bat. Back in the box, but up on the plate. And a breaking ball and a fair ball. Rahas. Oh, he's going to try for two. No, he's not. Good judgment. Not a blazer. Honor thy speed and lack thereof. Running down the chalk line. Good look here past Miguel Cairo. First hit in 12 career at bats for Barajas. Takes the big turn. You know he wants to, but. Nope. <laughs> Better part of Valor. Barmas now. A 175 batting average. Pops this one up. Easy for Phillips. Barmas's woes continue. And he continues to work at it, work at it. Along with Clint Hurdle and Greg Ritchie. Talking to Neil Huntington about that yesterday, that uh, they see signs on occasion from Barmas. Well, you need a good bunt here because you don't have a very fast runner at first base. Not a very good bunt. Ball dropped, but on the exchange, the out call at second. And his choice two six on the bunt. Easy pickings for Hannigan. The out is a done deal. So after that, nothing matters in that particular situation. Valdez dropping the ball. As McDonald bunts the ball right in front of the plate. So McDonald at first on the fielder's choice, the batter Tabana. And a strike. You wonder if it might be a group approach by the Pirates to get up on the plate and perhaps take that breaking ball that's outside away from Bronson. That might be. Uh, an angle they're thinking about. Uh, it makes you a little vulnerable to fastballs right in on the hands, but sometimes you'll take that approach to eliminate a pitch, thinking that you know maybe he can beat me with a curveball, but I'm not so sure he can beat me inside with a fastball. Might be able to react. Tabata lays off that one. Two and one. I see Tabata doing that a lot this year. That. The Exaggerated wave of the arm as he looks the ball into the glove of the catcher, Sammy Sosa like. That take action. Yeah. Two and two. Tabatas have been a bit streaky. Slow start, then got it going again for a couple weeks. He has led off each of the last 22 starts. Batting just 224 at the top of the lineup. We keep talking about Alvarez and no question what a key he is to the offense, but your leadoff man is always a key. And Tabata can 
really help the offense. It's back to form. Did he get nicked? Doesn't matter. It's ball four. Just an official in the card as a walk, and that's important because we talked about this early. Bronson Arroyo, just the eighth batter he has walked unintentionally. I, I still get a little confused with, with uh, the value of anybody at the top of the batting order. How many times are you going to lead off? I mean, I, I mean, I hear it all the time, so there must be some some uh, substance behind it. And I mean, if you got a good hitter, if, if he's going to hit anywhere, if you got a bad hitter, he's not going to help you anywhere, including the leadoff. But spot. for ages, managers have poured over this, and the, the, yep. your, your best hitters hit behind them, two and three hitters. So you're going to want that guy to get on base. But yeah, your your point is well taken. You don't you lead off the game. You're sure to lead off the game. Yeah, and that's it. That's the only assurance you have. But they they. There must be a reason. Absolutely. <laughs> Great importance to that leadoff guy. <laughs> that would be very, very nice to see if Mr. Walker could catch a gap and we add on and just keep adding on and just adding on and adding on and adding on. And that. Walker singled and scored in the first. It's been a Reds killer last couple of years. Pulls this ball fair inside the bag. McDonald will score. Tabata held it third on the double by Neil Walker. It's 3 0. Walker continues to be red hot against the Reds. A couple of chalk shots. Barajas down the left field line. Now Neil Walker finds the chalk the other direction. Just inside the bag. Fielded Colbert, the first base umpire with the call. RBI number 17 for Walker. Tabata to third and the batter McCutcheon. Eighth double of the year for Walker. And here you have this situation. McCutcheon grounded out in the first inning. And now one for 17 lifetime against Arroyo. But still one of the hotter hitters in baseball in the month of May. In particular. Batting 387 this month. That's fourth best in the league. Takes a strike one and one. One ball, one strike count. Pops it up, going to be out of play off to the right. You have got an opportunity right now to break this thing wide open and make the Reds think about a lot of catching up to do. Set the tone for the series. You'd like to get into that bullpen if you can early because the Reds have the best bullpen in terms of earned run average in the league. One ball, two strikes the count. And a foul ball that uh, another one gets, gets out of the glove. Against, <laughs> yeah, glove and hand. Ouch. That's why they like to have those catchers many times keep that throwing hand behind the body. Punxsutawney native Devin Mezzarocco is the backup catcher. Reaching out and popping it up. Brandon Phillips makes the catch. But the Bucks pick up another on the Walker double. Lead it 3 0.
Live in concert Saturday, June 9th after the Pirates Royal 715 game. See the top selling R&B group of all time sing their hits like On Bended Knee and End of the Road. Also at Eaton Park Scratch and Win Saturday. All fans get a scratch card good for prizes from Eaton Park. Tickets going fast. Get yours at Pirates.com. Boys to Men, June 9th. On the Allegheny. On this Memorial Day. The Pirates leading it three to nothing. Inside PNC Park. Where the Parrot is entertaining once again. James McDonald faces Ryan Hannigan. Reds catcher. Hammered toward left center field on the run. And Tabata. Not able to make the play. So he had gotten there. Couldn't tell with that angle whether he had cut short or the ball was just uh, out of his reach. The ball is carrying. Didn't quite just get there. Didn't get that arm out like you wanted to, Steve. Yeah, maybe not full extension. Yeah. No possible too. He's not exactly sure where McCutcheon is. Snap throw by Barajas to second. Is Arroyo going to try and move Hannigan to third? Arroyo has one sacrifice bunt. Got five career homers. He can handle the bat just fine, Arroyo. Now it's 2 0. Now, James, you don't want to complicate the issue right now. This would be a big favor if you are unable to come back and get Arroyo. That would take the Reds up to the top of their batting order. You want, you'll give up an out. No, they're giving you an out. Yeah, they're giving take you an it. out. Whenever somebody gives you yep. an out, take it. Yep. They're precious. Three and oh. Walked him on four pitches. Well, that's gonna really get at you, eat at you, doesn't it? It, it does, and you got to let it go. Mm. Uh, it, and it's hard to, because you know you didn't want to do that, and you can't keep it on your mind because you can't get it back. The big issue now is Drew Stubbs, who has proven to be a, a strikeout candidate all the time. He got him in the first inning, and talk about the double plays and everything, but strikeout would fit pretty nice right here, also. Is Dusty Baker going to have Stubbs? In the bunning mode here with the Pirates fully expecting it. 54 strikeouts now for Stubbs. And about 180 at bats. And he takes a ball. One more pitch that misses. You're probably going to see Ray Sierra just go out there and see if he can change the pattern, change the momentum a little bit. And let's hope that we don't. Find the need for Ray to make a, an appearance. Alvarez checking with the dugout. Where do you want me? You want him in on the grass. They think the Reds are committed to the bunt. And he still has yet to throw a strike. And so uh, Alvarez going to try and uh, let the uh, Donald know hey, here again. He's got to throw strikes. Here's Ray Searage as Steve. Predicted heading to the mound. In the meantime, Mike Berry will talk with Drew Stubbs briefly. There are times, I don't know if this is one of those times where, depending on the personnel involved, you will tell a guy, all right, you were bunting for the first two pitches he missed, but now he's just going to lay the ball in there. And that's uh, risky business. I think I said Mike Berry, I apologize. That's a former Pirates 
VP, mm -hmm. uh, Mark over at and it's Nerd. Not, it's not Chuck Berry. No. Nope. It's not Barry Gold, Goldwater. Double check here what we got. Huh? Nope, that's Mark Berry over at third. Well, we, sir. We do miss our buddy Mike Berry. Maybe yep. he's changed occupations. Yep. There we are. There's Mark. Billy Hatcher. First base coach. So here we go. 2 0 count, two on, nobody out. Pick off try. They want to find and out if he's still going. The second goes hand again. Yep. Timing pretty good between pitcher and infielder. Bunning again back to McDonald. What a nice play that was. Well, and what a bad bunt that was. Yeah. McDonald real quick spin around. Bad bunt by Stubbs. He knows it. And one big out. That is that is huge. And they just gave you one there and it didn't cost you anything. You got pretty good wood on this ball. And uh, I, I was just a little anxious because James got it and I know by there you didn't have to rush. I was going to hope that he was going to set himself a little bit more, but still right on the money. Might have been thinking too, you know, Stubbs runs so well. No chance for Alvarez. Might have been what McDonald was thinking. And strike one. Well, this could change everything around. You, you might want to remember that play. Well, how about now? You know, you've got your big man on deck. Now you're thinking double play. That would be gigantic with Votto on deck. Oh, Find a way to huge, huge. Get two out of it. Strikeouts are nice. No one two. We get that call on Mr. Valdez. Yeah, yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Valdez will take some extra time now before stepping in. Ball two strikes. So Steve, now here's McDonald who's become a strikeout pitcher. But you do want the double play. So you know your strength is what your strength is. What do you do here? Well, you, with James' situation, his strength is both his fastball and his breaking ball. Whatever it is, you want to keep it downstairs so it gives you the opportunity either for a swing and miss or a ground ball. So still ahead of the count. Is he going to go to the breaking ball? No. Nope. Fastball and hit the other way out of play. Yeah, once once he's gotten himself in this situation, oh and two, one and two, he's got a pitch or two to fool around with to just shut it down because yeah, ground ball, but there's no guarantee a ground ball is going to be right at somebody. So yeah, I'm thinking strikeout, strikeout attempt. Breaking ball, grounded foul. Stays one and two on Wilson Valdez. James McDonald, his 10th start this season, his second of the year against the Reds. Valdez, his sixth start at shortstop. And this guy coming to the game at 195. Struck him out. Block City. The breaking ball after the fastball. We say James has both of those weapons. Nothing fancy about that one. I mean, that uh, if if you're not just locked into fastball, that's in a reasonably hitting area. But if you're not, just you flinch, you can't pull the trigger, and you go back to the dugout. Votto now faces James McDonald. This is a first class matchup right here. Mm. To center field. Got him. Oh my. They get out of it. J Mac 
Works his way through that. Maintains the three nothing lead. Achievement for the Achiever in you. Pittsburgh Pirates three home runs yesterday. Third time this season. And all in the last 19 games. Alvarez, McCutcheon, the solo shot, and Garrett, G.I. Jones with the two-run homer to right. And two of the three home run hitters from yesterday. Alvarez and Jones do up one two here in the bottom of the third inning against Bronson Arroyo three runs five hits for the Bucks no runs three hits for Cincinnati Reds came in a game and a half up on St. Louis in the central Pittsburgh four back Alvarez doubled off the left field wall in the first inning just a foot away from an opposite field home run. By the way, those Cardinals are cooking early on a Memorial Day, six nothing early against the Atlanta Braves. They talked about uh, Alvarez getting another shot moments after this foul ball that was just in and out of. That's how close it was to being the last out of the inning. Instead, the Pirates would make Arroyo pay. Alvarez the double and later the Jones RBI single. Hannigan had that ball in his glove just at the last moment got on the ground. And you really don't blame the catcher, do you, Steve? It's more a matter of luck, isn't it? Yeah, for the, for the most part, yep. Although some, the, as we the, said, the, some the guys just happen to have a knack for it. Yeah, the ball's diverted. Yeah. Maybe just a little, little bit. That ball is crushed into the corner. Alvarez into second base. Good He's feeling Pedro. good on this Memorial Day. Pedro Alvarez rips one into the right field corner. And that ball was stung. Stung. They want it inside. They don't get it far enough inside. And rip city. Crack of the bat. Certain sounds that let you know they got a lot of it, a lot of contact. A leadoff double now, Garrett Jones. Well, the, that sound of the bat will remind you as a pitcher. The numbers that your outfielders wear on the back of their uniforms. You'll turn around many times after that sound, and you'll see the back of your outfielders. But you don't want to see the back of your outfielders' numbers, right? Yep. Jones, that's not going to do it. 
Wanted to at least move the runner, but this pop up the shallow right won't do anything. Alvarez forced to hold at second. One more batter out in front of an Arroyo off speed curveball. Arroyo has given up three runs on six hits. Very familiar foe. This is his 15th career start against the Pirates. Six and six, 365 lifetime ERA against his former club. Matt Haig popped up to end the first. And for the most part, his three previous starts of the weekend against the Chicago Cubs, with the exception of maybe an at bat, has made solid contact. But here he popped up his first time up against Bronson Arroyo. Boy, Memorial Day's pass for the Pittsburgh Pirates. I remember over at Three Rivers Stadium, Greg, when we annually had a doubleheader against the Cubs that would start at 10 o'clock in the morning. And how about that? A 10:05, 10:05 first pitch of Game One of a doubleheader on Memorial Day. Talk about uh, early morning wake-up call with Sando and Williams and all those guys. Kessinger, Banks, Becker, Hundley, Jim Hickman. <laughs> you really don't want to have breakfast with Billy Williams when he's serious with a bat. A hungry Billy Williams. Ball hit maybe off the end of the bat to right field. That's the second out, and Alvarez still there at second base. So the Reds trying to do to the Pirates what the Pirates did to the Reds in the top half of the inning when Hannigan had a leadoff double, but they couldn't get him around. Barajas had an extended at bat against Arroyo last inning and eventually singled inside the third base bag. Just a 118 career hitter against Reds pitching. But he's been one of the hotter buckos the past couple of weeks. He's been a hot rod. Yeah. Backhanded out of the dirt by Hannigan. Commander Cody would have liked him with that hot rod Lincoln. That's right. Got the hot rod Barajas. You got the hot Brad Lincoln in the bullpen. Mm -hmm. Got an entire bullpen that's warm out there. Juan Cruz, by the way, on the restricted list. He returns to the Dominican to take care of a personal matter. And so the Pirates bring up lefty Doug Slayton, the veteran who was doing tremendous work at AAA Indianapolis. And now two lefties in the bullpen. There's Slayton. Yep. ERA under a half, something like yeah, 0 36. <laughs> That's crazy. And he's been around a while, what? Mm -hmm. Parts of six major league seasons. Looked like almost a pitch out there, didn't it? Yeah. And again, what did that yeah, one just away. A, a pickoff play design? Look at that. Yeah, that, I think that's a design pickoff play. For some reason, they think that Pedro might be getting careless at second base. I don't know. Strange. These are strange times. Two one count. Went after the fastball and came up empty. Cincinnati Reds Pittsburgh Pirates renewing this long time rivalry. And into right center field a base hit with two down brings home Alvarez. It is hot rod Barajas isn't it. Yes indeed and hot stuff for the Pirates with two outs. Where you think you're almost uh, going to give up an opportunity that you had a good start with the leadoff double you think it's going to go wasted. That's a shot in the arm. That's not only a run. That's a shot in the arm for this ball club. The breaking ball the other way for nothing. Rajas two for two. His ninth RBI. 
Always beautiful shots from our AGH cam. Pirates now with seven hits. How about this offense? Well, you'd love to get on a little roll. And you never, you know, it ebbs and flows, but it's been ebbing for so long. We got a little flow started yesterday. Let's, let's ride it for a while. And uh, Bronson came into the game having given up more hits than innings pitched. It's always a little bit of a red flag. There have been a lot of pitchers that can live with that to a degree, work in and around it. But, uh, you know, the more base runners you give up, uh, the more you're going to have cash in. And Bronson, it's hard for him to have enough to protect that curveball these days. You know, he's throwing 87, 86, sometimes 88. Uh, a little more heat would be probably a little more protection for the curve. Another curve is. He just doesn't want to give in to Bombas. That's a 2 2 count with four straight breaking balls or four straight off speed pitches. Well, it's three and two. There's no way Harmus isn't getting a strike here. Yeah, and this is right now struggling Bronson Arroyo. Arroyo would much rather have a McDonald lead off next inning. Harmus yeah. currently batting 174. Lines it right at third. Pirates pick up another run. All four runs coming with two outs. Two out lightning for the Bucks. They lead it four nothing. None of us could imagine doing, and to be able to honor them and you know let them know that they're appreciated, I think is great. Good stuff from yeah. Josh Harrison. Well said. It's Memorial Day. I uh, think of Memorial Days. I think of my little town back in Connecticut, where my grandfather, who fought in World War One as a doughboy, later on, several years after that, posed for a statue. They built, put his uniform back on, and. Uh, there's a statue of a doughboy uh, commemorating those heroes of World War One, North Canaan, Connecticut. That's a neat memory. Yeah, it is. That's neat stuff. Doughboys. Later, they started calling him G.I. Jones. Yep. Yep. Doughboys, World War One, a little bit of World War Two. But as Josh Harrison just said, they have done and do things most of us can't even imagine, yeah. allowing us to do what we do here. Yeah. Brandon Phillips. How about that rendition of God Bless America? And that was phenomenal. The national anthem. So moving, Man. so appropriate, so fitting. Uh, the, the violin yeah. virtuoso. Yeah. 
God bless America and the anthem. Hmm. That is some unbelievable talent. Ground ball, Barmas scoops on the first. One away. So, you know, he, he has not contributed much at all with that bat, but he's as smooth as anybody over there at short. Yep. He really is. It's nice to know. You're awfully confident, I'm sure, as a pitcher, when that ball's hit to that guy. Yep. You're usually going to get it out. Yep. Clint Barmas. He'll he? move over to the right side with Jay Bruce to the plate. Put the shift on. Now, Bruce lined it over the head of Barmas his first time up. Well, what, wouldn't it make it? It would make such a statement in so many different ways to pick up a win today. You know, first of all, you, you, you get to 500, you, you make a statement to the red hot reds that you're legitimate. Well, and it sets the tone for this series. They're the first oh, yeah. place club. And then you think about you know, winning a series. Absolutely. After sweeping the Cubs, how about winning a series over the Reds? One ball, two strikes on Jay Bruce. Six for 14 lifetime against McDonald. This ball in the air. Two outs. I guess we're going to have to, you know, when we give those lifetime numbers, it really come a kind of a caveat with that because McDonald seems to be a different pitcher these days, doesn't he? Well, yeah, you know, he's, he's growing. He, you know, he is uh, all of a sudden, it, it seems like he's, at least for this particular stretch, he's figured it out. He's out there and he's doing what he wants to do instead of, instead of searching. He, said, he looks like he's committed to what he's going to do, and it's, it, it's happening. Swing and miss on Heisey. And he just sure himself the way he moves around. I mean, the, the way he's delivering the ball. Uh, he's just got that good look about him now. Throwing good pitches. Throwing what he wants to throw, where he wants to throw it. Ball to strike on Heisey. Bounced into a double play in the second. You know, there's another little indicator too of missing with a pitch that you want to miss with. Either set something up or position a batter as a result. And uh, Ray Sirage's favorite phrase, he will read the previous pitch. Like the last pitch will, will tell you something many times about what you're going to throw next. That is a great quality. And when a pitcher starts to do that, uh, you gain some ground. Little dribbler. And a roll. Oh, it's a fair ball and a nice play by Barajas. Gets Heisey by a half a step. Just got to it before it went on the other side of the chalk. Three quick ones, top of the fourth. It is done for the Reds this far.
here at PNC Park and James McDonald leads off against Bronson Arroyo. He tried to bunt Barajas to a second was unable to do so but did score after he reached on the fielder's choice on a Neil Walker two out double. One and one. And the Pirates on the board in each one of the first three innings. It's good stuff, steady stuff. Ball and two strikes. Good night. First for Arroyo. Steve, uh, we yeah, players got a break, didn't they? Yeah, let's check this out because the chalk is so close to the grass. Once the ball gets across and off that grass, it just turns directly. It's so close. That's a big factor. And keep going, keep going a little bit more. Yeah, Rod picks it up in foul territory. And that's the thing. Uh, very, very tough to stop the ball once it uh, gets off the grass. Now, if you're the home plate umpire, you're trying to get a good look. Lance Barksdale, but might have been partially blocked there by Barajas. Just get Chris Heisey to make it a one, two, three, top of the fourth. And it's an interesting decision that Barajas has to make there because Heisey's not slow. Right. And the ball is heading into foul territory. And it's out there a ways. It's yeah. not right, you know, right uh, directly out in front, just barely out in front of the catcher. It's down the line a ways. Oh, there's a shot. Oh. A one out single to center by Tavada. Yep, so he comes back after uh, not looking good on the breaking ball. Guesses curve or looks for curve. There's no guessing. But gets it and rips it. AT&T trivia question. Jason Grilly set a club record by striking out at least one batter his first 19 games. Who has the longest current streak in the majors? Striking out at least a batter. First 19 games. I'm inclined to think it might be the guy in the other bullpen. Chapman. Or Aldous Chapman. Or the guy down in Atlanta, perhaps. I'll go along with you, Chapman. Or Aldous yes. Chapman has become the closer he is now. Just a flamethrower. Ball one on Neil Walker, two for two. Tabata has stolen five bases, caught four times. Well, it's time for Neil to get the triple, right? That's right. He's got the single, the double. By the way, in a, in a minute, uh, everyone is going to pause around the nation for a moment of silence. There's a fly ball to right. Catch is made. We're getting close, aren't we? Yeah, we will all, of course, join in on that. Right, maybe before the batter steps in, Andrew McCutcheon, rather than begin the at bat. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. This and every Memorial Day, we are proud to join with Major League Baseball in honoring those Americans who have sacrificed their lives in serving our country. We now pause to remember those heroes. On this day, for one brief moment, hear the silence fill the air. Think of those who walked beside us now.
Andrew McCutcheon will step in. Oh, that's a nice sign there, huh? Indeed. Very appropriate. Indeed. Thanks for that. Took a lot of hard work. It's a great sign. McCutcheon gets one in the air to center. And that'll do it. After four, Pirates lead four nothing here on Root Sports. Small on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel.com, definitely worth the click. By PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. And by Chevy Cruise, which offers EPA estimated 42 MPG highway. Let's go Bucks! 4-0, Pirates lead it here at PNC Park on Memorial Day 2012. And the bottom third of the order against James McDonald, Miguel Cairo, Ryan Hannigan and Bronson Arroyo. Breaking pitch stays up. And activity in the Reds bullpen. Four runs, eight hits for the Pirates. There's Alfredo Simon. And a base hit for Cairo to lead off the fifth. McDonald had a one, two, three, fourth inning. But for the third time in the last four innings, the Reds get their leadoff man on. But the Pirates continue to get big third outs, and the Reds have not. Pirates have gotten big two out hits. That's been the difference this afternoon. Shooter already in the on deck circle for the Reds. Costanzo currently, I believe that's Mike Costanzo. So those things can change depending on what Hannigan does. 2 0. Oh. 2 0 oh count, to be sure, even though the scoreboard said 3 0. Oh. And up the middle, a base hit. And the Reds. Setting up shop once again. Mike Costanzo will pinch hit. Two oh pitch to Hannigan. Kicks off the mound into center. So McDonald upset thinks maybe be able to flag that down. That was a pretty hard hit. Costanzo, left hand batter. Replaced uh, Scott Rowland on the roster. Hey, right 
signed as a minor league free agent this winter. Let's see what the Pirates do here defensively against the left hand batter. Ball one. So Barajas will call time. Not any kind of an issue with pitch count for James McDonald. Not any issue with runs having been given up because he's given up none. Obviously no indication about a bunt. If it was a two nothing lead that might be a different factor but it's four nothing Pirates so Costanza is just. Going to be swinging away. Costanza actually was acquired. By the Reds in May of 2010. 2 0 the count. His first taste of the big leagues. Formerly a second round pick of the Phillies in 2005. 2 and 1 on Mike Costanzo. Might have helped us out a little bit there. Yeah. Kind of a high fastball. Might have been a borderline call, but we'll never know. And James is back in the at bat. Back involved. Three and one. Critical pitch coming up. Nice looking pirate lead, but I don't want to let this thing get uh, too involved here in the top of the fifth. And now, three two count. And now you got a situation where you've got a young hitter up there who does not want to be called out on strike. So he might be inclined to take a swing at anything, borderline, anything. And just in case, Cairo dancing off second. McDonald stepped off, looked him back. 3 2 pitch. And in the air. Shortstop infield fly will be called. Big comeback. Got a circle around that one. You get the pinch hitter Costanzo after you're down in the count. 3 and 1 at one point. Yeah, you lose him. Now, now you really got the, the, the water muddied mm -hmm. badly. 3 on, nobody out. You're going back to the top of the lineup. Whole different look now. You're not out of the woods by any means, but you've established that out. So it's not a continuing momentum by the Reds where you're looking for that first out. You have it in your pocket now. One ground ball could get you out of this. Now, now you look back at that third inning when they had runners at first and second. Nobody out. Stubbs came to the plate and bunted back to McDonald. This time, first and second, one out. Stubbs, as Steve has said, is certainly a strikeout candidate, but he has excellent power. And James, uh, no problem with the pitch count. He's starting to, to start at bats out behind in the count yeah. and get the ball elevated somewhat. Six home runs this season for Stubbs. 291 career hitter against the Pirates. And a swing and a miss. One and one. I would imagine if he's not ranked among the strikeout leaders in the National League, he's not far from it. Came in tied for fifth. As Simon continues to throw in the bullpen. 1-1 one, one pitch. 1-2. One and two. And what you have in your pocket now for James McDonald, you've got a strikeout fastball available. If you want to use it now, well, yep, you might try it. You might also want to just give him one more look at something off speed to set it up even further. So James is in the driver's seat right now. In the driver's seat, but he's got to make the correct turn. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. He got him looking. A fastball at the knees. James, you're getting stuff in the soup a little bit, but you're cleaning up the mess nicely to this point. You've done it the entire afternoon, and you got a chance to do it once again. 
one more out needed. And once again, we will point out the man on deck. He's got Valdez at the plate. He has struck him out both times. Votto on deck. Check swing or did he? Quick appeal. Yes. Says Fielding Colbreth. Yep. The heart of this batting order is obvious. Yeah, three, four, and five. <laughs> Valdez, that look tells it all what he thinks of that call. But there's Votto on deck. Yep. And then it's Phillips and then it's Bruce. That that is the meat of this order. And a roller to first. Wow. Jay Mack on the attack. Despite giving up leadoff singles to Cairo and Hannigan. Maturation of a pitcher. Pittsburgh the Pirates leading game one of the three game series the automotive presents this day in Pirates history on this day the long homered his eighth consecutive game a record that would not be matched until 1987 by Don Mattingly this day in 1956 they along now Alfredo Simon takes over on the mound for the Red Legs. Excellent ERA. We mentioned that they have the lowest ERA in the National League. The Reds bullpen 248. Pirates just behind them at 250. And Simon, a big part of the pen. He will face Pedro Alvarez, who's two for two. A pair of doubles. An RBI and two runs scored. Ball one. And this will be an adjustment. He throws a lot harder than Bronson Arroyo. You saw that seven plus innings includes 19 strikeouts. 6-6, six, six, 260. Claimed off waivers from the Orioles first week of April. And he's been all over the place. Uh, Phillies organization, Giants organization. Baltimore last year starting and relieving. Up and down minors and the big leagues with Baltimore previous four years. To center. Stubbs to the track to the wall. Oh he held on. At the top of the wall. We Drew saw a Stubbs. lot of baseball saw a lot of baseball with that glove. Big time snow cone. A lot of carry off the bat of Pedro Alvarez. Glove, ball. Wow, that's close to being a 
trap. And then Clint Hurdle's going to ask about this here. The second base umpire, Adrian Johnson, that is close to trapping it against the wall. Hmm. Wow. 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 Umpires will, are they, going will they review that? To gather. I, I don't think they get the review down on the uh, down on the ground crew area, do they? And, and that does have to be whether it's over the fence. That was never going to be over the fence. So it remains judgment. Talking it over here with uh, Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, the third base umpire. As to what uh, they are going to go ahead mm -hmm. and take look a look at it. I'm going to talk to Clint Hurdle about it. I don't think that's reviewable. No, no, it's got to be over the fence. That's what I, I was thinking. Chief Gary Cedarstrom at uh, third base. And Clint Hurdle gets final ruling. Is that your final answer? Take another look. The glove is in back of the ball initially, but then you wonder about the top of the glove and the ball. Making contact off the top of the glove late, but we'll never know. Well, we can decide what we want to. It's been called an out by the umpires. There have been reports that the uh, baseball is thinking about expanding video replay to traps. And what's next after that? What's next after that? <laughs> right now, just uh, potential home runs, fan interference, boundary calls, reviewable. As long as the possibility of a home run exists. Well, that was awfully close. I don't even know that it had replay been involved. That would have been definitive. Do you? No, because the, the, the ball is at the top of the glove. So you don't know if it's just straight up from the glove or it's in back of the glove. Drew Stubbs. Hanging with it. Owen to the count on Garrett Jones. He fights this one off, and if it's fair, it's got a chance to drop in for a hit. It's just foul. We well, are that close to having Pedro have that great afternoon. Still a chance. He's still going to have a real good afternoon, but that would have probably been three doubles in a row. Oh, and two. And the other way. That's a foul ball and out of play. Still Owen two on Garrett Jones. Bronson row goes just four innings, gives up the four runs on eight hits. Three call. Two outs back to our trivia question. Talking about strikeouts by relievers. This one, uh, we mentioned that uh, Jason Grilly has set a team record by striking out at least one batter in his first 19 games. Who currently has the longest streak in the majors? It's Araldus Chapman. 21 straight games for the flame throwing lefty, now closer. For the Reds, Matt Haig takes ball one. Just a little sampling of his numbers 26 innings, 44 strikeouts. And to left center field, Haig is going to get extra bases as Stubbs can't make the play. Matt Haig into second base with a line double. And that ball was stung. Egg 
making the diving attempt. Comes up empty, so Haig has himself a double. He was one for three with a walk and a run scored yesterday. So since his return, he has four hits. And a dozen at bats, and with two outs, the Pirates doing great work today. Here they are again. Yeah. Another two out hit, and here's Barajas. He had a two out single his last time up that brought home Alvarez to make it four to nothing. And he's two for two on the day. Breaking pitch lays off that check swing, but this time Fielding Colbert says he went. Fairly consistent, though, if you look at what uh, Colbert called on Valdez in the top of the inning, hard to argue. Hey, gets second, two outs. One and two. Breaking ball. Two and two. You can believe that the catchers earn their money on days like this. It is smoking hot down there. Lunging all over the place, saving pitches, taking foul balls off the various parts of the body. And now he's worked the count to three and two. Barmas is on deck. And with first base open, you can understand them also being very careful to the hot hitting Rod Barajas. Will he get a pitch in the zone here? From Simon. Breaking ball, and it's line foul. He did get a strike to swing at. All the pitches away, and this one up and in and pulled foul. Still three and two. Fredo Simon. Another foul ball. Simon in just over 18 innings has walked four and now struck out 20. Bullpen that includes Pittsburgher J.J. Hoover now. Matt Haig at second. Two lefties in the pen for Dusty Baker along with the closer Chapman. Sean Marshall and a good at bat again for Barajas. He draws the walk. Clint Barmas will come to the plate. He lined out sharply with two outs in the third inning, popped up to second his first time. Haig a double at second and Barajas the walk at first. Strike one. A bouncer to second. 
Phillips will throw out Barmas. Pirate Strand two. We've played five. It remains four nothing Pittsburgh. Friday, June the 8th, Free Shirt Friday. Andrew McCutcheon likes it. You will, too. Brought to you by Augustine's Pizza. Come early for a block party on Federal Street before the game and enjoy local live music and food for tickets. Go to Pirates.com slash Free Shirt Friday. Cool-looking shirt you'll get. Indeed. Cool-looking shot, as always. Of this great city and this great ballpark and they're psyched up on this Memorial Day to try and get the Pirates to their fourth straight win. Looking for their first four game winning streak of the year. Joey Votto, Brandon Phillips, Jay Bruce against Jay Mack. Ball one on Votto. Once again, that familiar uh, overshift that the Pirates employ against a pull hitter such as Votto. With Alvarez moving from his third base position. Shallow right field. 2 0. Oh. See uh, Clint Barmas patrolling the left side of the infield. Two oh count. In the air deep to right. Jones turns around the wrong way, but finds his way to the baseball. And let's go downstairs to Lacey Collins. Guys, this is Emilio Tapia. He just came in for the game, and it's because he played Little League with Pedro Alvarez for seven years in New York. What made you make the trip this weekend? Every year we try to watch some type of baseball during Memorial Day weekend, and this is the perfect time to come out here and watch Pedro. Ever since he got drafted, we wanted to see him play in the majors, and this is the perfect weekend to, go, to come see him. My brothers and our wives, it's perfect time to watch a baseball game. Seven years, you got to have one good game, you remember, right? Yeah, it's, I was 12 years old, he was 11. Um, I got throw, I was pitching, he was playing shortstop, but threw a no hitter. Um, he actually hit two home runs, it was the game winning home run because we ended up winning 3 0. And we got a baseball sign. He signed that I signed it, and my coaches, Dave Myers and Eddie, signed it. That was good 14 years ago now. That was my best memory of Pedro playing back in Little League. Now, and this is an extra special Memorial Day for you because you're here with your brother who was an Army vet. Yes, he served in Iraq. He had a, one tour in Iraq from 2004 to 2005. It was about 13 months. Um, he served in Afghanistan and South Korea. And this is just a special weekend because we get to bring him out here in Pittsburgh, watch a lot of the game and all the veterans seeing everything here. It's, it's all pretty awesome. Carlos told me, guys, when he was overseas, this is where he wanted to be with his family. So thanking everybody who's been there for us in the military, those we need to remember. And, you know, happy Memorial Day, guys. Happy Memorial Day. Thank you very much, Lacey, and to uh, Emilio Tapia, 
buddy Pedro Alvarez. And uh, his brother, the veteran. So many directions to give pause. Off of McDonald. Retires Brandon Phillips. And James just keeps rolling along. No panic. Pick it up. Toss it to first. Fine, right? Out number two. J Mack uh, an out away from six zeros. Last time out, strong work. Seven innings, giving up one run, but came away with a no decision. So he's tightened the belt even further this afternoon. Strike one. He's thrown 74 pitches. Been efficient. And Steve talked uh, at the end of the uh, fifth inning, the top of the fifth, when he got the last out of Valdez, the maturation of a pitcher. You really are watching it. it it's fun to see a guy who came over kind of raw green from the Dodgers develop into a top notch major league pitcher. And it's really neat to see it. This is a guy who was very inefficient. When he first came over, and you saw the talent, Steve, the stuff that he had, even parts of last year, but now just really putting it all together. Yeah, it, it's it's quite an evolution. That ball popped up. It's going to be out of play. Also, the thing is, you, know, you come all around with raw talent, and then you can polish that and, and refine it and add all the pieces you need to. If you're doing refinement work with average talent and an average arm, it's it's a tougher job. I mean, this guy had a lot to bring to the table. And now he's learned how he's learning how to use it. I, 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 don't, I don't think anybody would think he's a finished product, but he's made tremendous strides with taking advantage of that great arm. Realizing it's not just enough to have a great arm. You've got to learn how to pitch. James McDonald's learning how to pitch. And uh, so far in that uh, in that classroom, he's piling up a lot of A's, some A pluses. If he keeps this up by the end of the day, he'll be in the top 10 in terms of earned run average. A couple of pitches have gotten away from him here. And on a very hot day, we'll have to see what they do uh, heading to the bottom of the sixth. Should he get out of this inning, even though he's pitching great. Sure at the Searage and. Hurdle watching the 2 2 pitch now to Bruce. Hard, but nice pick there by Haig. That's the other part of Haig's game. Olay. Excellent defense. An excellent start again for James McDonald. Four zip.
room, black dude, yeah, we talk the talk, the bucks up, still see like me and walk back. Yeah. Yeah. Like the second amendment give you the right to. Yeah. Mad cash, there's a career here to excite you. Uh. This year is the year, like a cop with your lost year. Let's go bucks. The place is here, the time is now, stop clapping, we're gonna make it happen. Chucky Acobe, the former Steeler, is as big a Pirates fan. He's gonna keep, uh, I don't know, they might have a third and fourth edition, he said, to Bucktown as we go along. Strike on James McDonald, who is 0 for 2. Whatever it takes to stay cool on a hot Memorial Day. Yep. One ball, one strike. I'm looking at those boats out in that Allegheny River. Does that look inviting? Oh, man. With a full cooler man. and somebody to drive, pilot the ship. That time of year. Yeah. Hot fun in the summertime. Sly in the family stone. Strike three called. Second K for Simon. Check on the uh, HH Sports Medicine injury update. How about the concern of Roy Halliday? Left yesterday start. After two innings, right shoulder soreness this season, 11 starts, 398 ERA. That's not bad for many pitchers, Steve, but not for Roy Halladay. You know, just when you think you've got a handle on the game and things are involved in the game, you know what's coming up, you know what about a sure thing. Uh, not a sure thing. It just, the, the game has unbelievable stops and starts and turns. And the Phillies, you know, look at uh, Brian Howard, Chase Hudley, Halladay. He loses time. Slow roller to the right side. Phillips gathers it in. Throws on to get Tabata. Right. Terry there? Terry Kissel? Yep. He got the right shirt. I see some red, white, and blue there. Talk about a guy oh, yeah. working, too, by the way. He's all over the ball. Oh, yeah. Baseball yeah. theme and flag. And America. I'm surprised to see Terry smiling at this yeah, moment. Really, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad we could capture that on camera. That guy. That's an occasional. Hard thing. to get Terry to smile. More mm -hmm. pleasant people you're ever going to meet. Neil Walker now swings and misses. Take a look at that flag. Just need to wake up this morning, have a cup of coffee, and go out and put the flag out in the holder off the front porch. Did Karen, do that for you? Or? No, she's not there. Oh. I struggled through the evening. Mm -hmm. You did that yourself then, huh? I did. I did all that. What about dinner last night? Well, you I cook, do you have to do that yourself too? I did. I got half a cow and got on the back porch, cooked that half a cow, a couple of cold ones. Yeah. Just big mm -hmm. cigar and still the, yeah. watch the world go by. Okay. Tough <laughs> night for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Sir. she's going to be back. Huh? Up at the cabin with our grandson and having a good time. I think I saw your son here today, Chris, didn't I? Chris was here with a uh, uh, couple of guys. Uh, Chris representing PNC yeah. Bank. They got some guests up in the suite. Outstanding. Thank they got a good PNC thanks. Bank's got a good man in Chris Blass. Yeah, well, thanks for the mention. But uh, he's to behave. He had his boss with him, so okay. I'm sure he's on his good behavior. Yeah. John Cleese from West Virginia Energy Services, guests of PNC at PNC Park. We're here because of them. Yep. That's bottom line, as Neil Walker goes down on strike. So for the first time, the Pirates retired one, two, three, head to the seventh or zip. Yeah, we'll take some. Thank you.
Ballpark, PNC Park, perfect for corporate events, weddings, bar mitzvahs, and more. Catering options available in the Lexus Club, the Pittsburgh Baseball Club, or the Hall of Fame Club here at PNC Park. Call 1-800-BUY-BOX or go to pirates.com slash PNC Park events. Yeah, Call speaking, right now. Speaking of hosting, yeah. And uh, hosting the Cincinnati Reds in kind of rude fashion, but uh, very entertaining so far. The Pirates lead it for nothing. Great day for young and old alike here at PNC Park, taking in the Bucks. Chris Heisey dribbles one. The first pitch will be an out. Mm, is that much welcome. You get a glimpse of uh, Ryan Brown there. He's here. Yep. Here with He's some buddies. Speaking of our sons yep. on this Memorial Day. Yep. Great to have him with us. Absolutely. Great day to be here. And uh, two more games left on this homestand. 7:05 tomorrow. And 7:05 on Wednesday. He's one of the great Pirate fans right there. RB. Yep. Ryan Brown. Ryan Henry. Getting those fans revved up. Yep. <laughs> Grown up on you, isn't he? He sure is. <laughs> Strike is called on Cairo, who has flied out and singled. Breaking ball. By the way, tomorrow it's Charlie Morton against Homer Bailey. And then Wednesday, how about the pitching matchup of A.J. Burnett against Johnny Cueto? That is very intriguing. Cueto. It's been tremendous, and Burnett, with the exception of one start, has been outstanding as well. Meanwhile, two and one on Cairo. Number 53 has been quite outstanding yep. this year as he works in the seventh inning on a hot afternoon. Throwing some hot pitches. Doing some hot pitching. Boy, good looking pitch. Doesn't get the call. We go to three and one. Take a look on our UBMC Sports Medicine strike zone grid. Mm, that close. We got a man there, or we will shortly. Two away in the seventh. James McDonald, and, and he's at a point in this ball game, Greg, where. He's just going along, and, and each out he gets without allowing a runner, that just makes everybody relax in that dugout. Clint Hurdle, Ray Searage, uh, because it is a long afternoon, a hot afternoon, he gets a base runner, that that alerts everybody. It doesn't set up any really, really red flags because he's going along so well, and he's got a little cushion of four runs. But each time he just gets these guys out, out after out after out, I mean, just pushes them further. And uh, then you get a degree of uh, adrenaline if, uh, if he wants to be allowed or if he, if he is allowed to be going into the eighth inning. One ball, no strikes. Center field, and this is going to be seven shutout innings for James McDonald. We're going to keep it right here on this Memorial Day. You can enjoy Take Me Out to the Ball Game with us. Here's Tim Tobacco. We invite you now to stand, follow the bouncing Eaton Park Smiley Cookie, and join everyone watching at home on Root Sports as we sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game.
you're enjoying your Memorial Day with respect and remembrance. those Jolly Roger flags today. Got a ways to go yet. Strike is called on McCutcheon, who's 0 for 3. What is great, too, is our military personnel, all of them that are deployed away from the United States, love their sports, love their sports information from back home, baseball, football, hockey, basketball. They love their sports and they love to know what's going on back home. Thank you, thank yep. you, thank you. Two and one on McCutcheon. Alvarez and Jones to follow. Against getting some more. Pirates are ahead 4 0 with the way McDonald is pitching. It seems like more, but it's four runs. Could use a little extra wiggle room. They say at the blackjack table, a little Seguro, a little insurance. To right field, Andrew McCutcheon leads off with a base hit. Pirates have a chance to. Get to within three games of the Reds in the National League Central Division. Hyundai presents the other scores involving the Central Clubs and the Cardinals winning big eight to two in Atlanta. The struggling Braves looks like they're going to lose their eighth straight game. The Cubs lead San Diego six to four. Come on, Cubbies. <laughs> no, because we're rooting for Dale Swain now that they're gone, but they've lost 12 in a row now. Colorado five to two leaders. Game one of a doubleheader at Coors Field. And tonight the Brewers visit the Dodgers. I I say that almost kiddingly, but you really kind of suffer with the swing. This ball rolled to second. Easy double play ball. Alvarez, who is now two for four. Had an RBI double off the wall and left. Doubled and scored in the third. Current standings in the central. Win. The Bucks get to three back. Looks like the Cardinals will stay a game and a half behind. The surprising Astros start the day five off the pace, and Milwaukee Brewers are trying to right their ship. They've lost seven of their last ten. And we talked about the Cubs. Ground ball right side. Votto on to Simon. Head to the eighth. J Mack will take the mound. Four nothing lead. Pirates Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. By AT&T. 
the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. And buy Levin Furniture. For the best deal on Tempur-Pedic mattresses, shop Levin's. Let's go. Bucks six outs away from winning game one of this three-game series. And it's ball one on the pinch hitter, Zach Cozart. And every consecutive out that McDonald gets, and he's retired nine in a row, makes it more difficult for the Pirates to take him out of the game. But uh, just in case, again, it's been a long afternoon in the heat, activity in the bullpen. If James gives up a base runner with nobody out, who knows? Uh, I'm sure Clint Hurdle and, and Ray Serge have a plan here. But I've been in these situations, ball followed away. And what you're thinking, if I let a guy get on, I'm probably going to, there's going to be a consideration for me to get out there. But let me see if I can force the hand by continuing to get guys out one by one and make it tougher for them to make that kind of a decision. And he has been on that kind of roll, making it tough, retiring the last nine in a row. His 92nd pitch. That's a good one. Changes for defensive purposes. Gorky Hernandez in left. Jose Tabata moves from left to right. Two and two. McDonald has struck out four. Cozart fights that off. Steve, you're talking about this watching this guy mature. This note kind of says it all. He has pitched seven or more innings in five of his last seven starts coming into this season. He had pitched a total of five times in his career. Yep. Seven plus. Indicator. Did he go? Yes, he did. That's number five. Once again, fools somebody with a breaking ball, and it's not the first time it's happened. Looking for the fastball out in front, starts to swing early. Too late to shut it down on a pitch. That you would not normally be swinging at downstairs down under the strike zone. He is currently fifth in the National League in strikeouts. James McDonald and he's going to be ranked where you said it was going to be improved with the ERA too. One down to the eighth Stubbs has struck out twice. Two strikes to count now. You get to two strikes on a real strikeout candidate like Drew Stubbs, I and mean, you've got a lot of options available. And you believe you can probably get him with any one of your two best pitches. That's what you believe. In the air, Gorky Hernandez sprinting. And did he make the catch? Oh! Gorky Hernandez, a fabulous play in left center field. Yeah, you want to make defensive changes? Increase your odds of getting those kind of outs in the outfield. We'll make that change. There aren't too many outfielders are going to get this ball. Right, the last minute keeps it from, get, from getting on the grass. Wow. Wow, that is the last minute, and that glove snapping closed over the baseball. So, so there again, another out for James. <laughs> He keeps getting out, so he keeps staying in there. And that's great. That was leather on top of grass. James, that was play might keep you in the ball game. It might have kept you in the ball game. Now it's 0 2 on Valdez and Gorky Hernandez, maybe without argument, the best defensive outfielder in the Pirate system and one of the best in professional baseball. That coming from those who have watched him over the years in the Tigers, Braves, and Pirates organizations. That is pitch number 101 right there. And, uh, one, two, three. Top of the eighth for J Mac. He's looking to go the distance.
Reds in town tomorrow night and Wednesday night, then on the road for a week to Milwaukee and Cincy, and a weekend brief homestand series interleague against Kansas City before the Pirates hit the road again. So by the way, speaking of the road, you can take the Pirates with you by subscribing to MLB.tv. See every Pirates out of market game live online and on your favorite devices in HD quality. Go to Pirates.com to order. Get more de details. MLB.tv baseball everywhere. Yep. James McDonald, uh, Steve, is yeah, I, yeah, playing his case. Yeah, he, he is. I think he he's wants to, to stay, stay in. Yep. Searage on the phone to the bullpen, hurdle there. And right now, nobody in up in the bullpen, so maybe they're going to give him a shot. And again, he probably going to have to run the table if they send him out there, but he has retired 12 in a row and just an absolutely strong performance. The pitcher for. Cincinnati J.J. Hoover new shortstop Cozart he takes over at short Simon was terrific three scoreless innings of relief a couple hits a walking two walks a walk and two strikeouts there we go. But, uh, the Pirates got on the board early four runs early and they have made it stand up behind the stalwart pitching of James McDonald it's been great. Elizabeth Forward's own J.J. Hoover. It's been neat to see some Pittsburgh natives uh, in the big leagues this week, right? Yeah. Nice to have some repre representation from the South Hills. Yeah. Had a lot of North Hills right. stuff, a lot of Pine Richland. And Lake Lolly was uh, in town yeah. with the Cubs. Go down Route 51 to Elizabeth Forward. Find out about this major leaguer. It's Matt Haig looking. Haig one for four. Cozart, the shortstop now after pinch hitting. It's Rod Barajas, and of course we now look ahead to the ninth inning to see what McDonald will be facing. It's Votto, Phillips, and Bruce, the three, four, five hitters. Rajas on base three times. Also Mezzarocco from uh, Punxsutawney, yep, so that's a little right. northeast action. One ball, one strike. The count on Barajas. Tony Watson was. Loosening in the bullpen. Two innings back. To left field. This will be the second out. Steve, there are a lot of firsts you want to get out, you know, under your belt in Major League Baseball. First hits, first wins, first strikeouts, and the like. What about a first complete game? Oh. Big, big, big shut out, bigger. Yeah, when you can run the table, that's that's pretty special. McDonald has had neither. This is his 57th major league start. Looking for his first complete game shutout. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to take a scorecard down to J Mac? Steve will do that. Yeah. Steve will uh, sign, date it. And yep. Yep. No, not 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 signed. These are just dates and accomplishments. Okay, yep. uh, did that with Gorky Hernandez. Uh, found him in the. I had to hunt him down. Found him in the batting cage. His first major league hit and RBIs and run. But, uh, yeah, to, to to go the whole way. That that's a that's a neat thing. And it's not all that common anymore, but it's great when you do it. Just to prove to yourself you can do it. I mean, that's that's part of it too. And, he has come such a long way, and this is this is a, 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 a big leap on top of what he's accomplished so far. If he's able to do that, and regardless of what happens in the ninth inning, he has done a great job today. Two-two count, and uh, it, it, it's been a nice crowd on Memorial Day. The Pirates scored early, and. and since then, it's just been all about James McDonald. So there hasn't been that degree of buzz, but you hope and, and you really believe that there's an appreciation for what he has done. 
Well, I believe there I'll is. I'll say this when he came off the mound, of course, Hernandez got a nice round of applause when he came in making that great defensive play, but they were uh, giving J Mac a standing ovation when he came to the dugout. So I agree with you. I think there is a great appreciation for the job he has done and for this pitching staff just has kept the Pirates in just about every single game and three outs away from reaching that magical 500 mark. This is this is a, a, a replay of last summer uh, to this to this point. We're seeing what we saw half a year last year. Our hope is that it continues into late summer and that there was there's no collapse and the Pirates feel like they have such depth now in their pitching that we could be talking a pennant race deep into the summer. And, and you've got the perfect division right now and you just take nothing away from Cincinnati. They've done a great job. By the way, in case you're wondering at this time last year after 48 games this is the 48th game the Pirates were 22 and 26 four games under 500 so three outs away from bettering that mark and can J Mac do it. You'll watch with us. Chance to pitch his first career complete game and shut out. He'll go eight. Hey, by the way, he's got a World Series ring. Not yet, James McDonald, but the Teak does. He'll answer your Pirates questions. Don't be shy. Ask Teak. Text the keyword Teak, followed by your question and name to 412 412. So the Pirates will hand it over to the bullpen. Double switch, Casey McGee. Will play first base and bat in the ninth spot, which would be due up first should we need the bottom of the ninth. And Tony Watson will come on to pitch. We don't want no stinking bottom of the ninth. 14,792 on this Memorial Day. Brings in the lefty Watson because two of the three batters here in the bottom of the ninth bat from that left side, Votto and Bruce. So, a job well done once again, for James McDonald. ZRA now at 220 for the season. Does that jump him up into the middle of the ERA chart? It is eighth best. And that, of course, is subject to what perhaps some of those guys ahead of him do. One and one on Votto. He was one for three against James McDonald. <laughs> one. 
One two pitch. 94 miles an hour on the gun. Thank you very much, my dear Watson. Sounds something like the way Myron would phrase it. My dear Watson. <laughs> dear caller, dear Watson. Three and two. Remains three and two on Votto. Tony Watson, like most left handers, will try to work that outside corner against left handed batters. That's the way the lefties work. Every once in a while, they'll come inside to keep the left hand batter honest, but they make their living out of way. Take a look. Pitch location. Way over there. Way over there. Oh, almost so close, so close. Lead off walk. Just barely off the outside corner. Now Clint Hurdle has to get to Joel Hanrahan loosening in the bullpen. If another batter reaches. Expect to see the closer. It would become a save situation. Phillips 0 for 3 against McDonald. Phillips a career 303 hitter against the Pirates. All star gold glover. Thirty years old Raleigh North Carolina. He was one for twelve in that three game series first week of the month here. McGee is over. Mm, yeah. Yes. Yep. One out in the ninth. Good English, good spin on the ball to bring it back into play. Casey McGee stayed with it. The new first baseman. And now right fielder Jay Bruce. Robbed of a hit by Matt Haig in the sixth. Hot shot down toward first. You really kind of like where you are against the Cincinnati batting order. You, you, one more batter and you're beyond most of the power. A good bit of the power threat. Not that the other guys aren't capable, but your big boys are three, four, and five. Reds will hit their certainly their share of home runs. They've hit the 53 coming into this series second most. 10 behind the Cardinals who've hit 63. However. Their power is neutralized when you get them outside of their home yard. Runner goes and. Pirates will pay no attention to Votto. Defensive indifference. Reds have hit 35 of their home runs at home. Just 18 on the road. And now two and two. Certainly would. Believe that Tony Watson is going to continue to try to stay away from the 
Bruce Power. By the way, we'll see where Rod Barajas sets up. Struck him out. Two away. Probably didn't want this pitch where he threw it, but he gets away as he goes upstairs instead of being out away. And where Bruce goes down for the 47th time this year. Sometimes you throw a pitch where it's not expected, and you get the surprise factor, and you get a swing and a miss. One out away from winning their fourth straight, these Pirates. Mm -hmm. Season high winning streak. And getting to within three games of the Reds in the Central. And doing it in impressive fashion. Now that just lets the fans build it up a little more. Chris Heisey in the hole 0 and 2. Don't forget two more games left against these Reds. Tomorrow night, Wednesday night, both 705 starts. Do it, Tony. Do it again. One ball, two strikes. The other way, and this is going to break the shutout as Chris Heisey has an RBI single on a one two pitch. Scoring Votto, and it's now 4 1. We'll see. Then Hurdle stays with Watson. Here comes Hurdle. He is going to go to his closer. It is now a safe situation, and this is pretty standard for managers throughout baseball. Looking for that final out. We'll go to the hammer to try and nail it down now. Runner on. Two outs. Bucks lead by three. Memorial Day, the Pirates are one out away from 
nailing down this victory. And these are the kind of save opportunities you love. The ball game at this point is not in danger, and all you're looking for is one out to get to that 12th save. Again, the runner goes from first. Pirates not paying any attention to Heisey. Hanrahan, that 12th save, if he gets it, put him in a tie for fourth place in the National League in the saves department. Jonathan Papabon of the Phillies leads the league with 14. This should do it. Get ready to raise it. It's all catches. Raise the Jolly Roger. The Pirates have won four in a row for the first time this season. And they moved within three games of the Reds. And they are at 500. Yes. I love it. Now your goals can change. you got this as a foundation. Now. Let's see where this is going to take us. So far a very great memorial. Weekend. And we'd love to see you out here. The Pirates are on a little bit of roll. Come out and watch the Bucks. Two more games. And there's a lot of road work for the Pirates in June. So make it count. Come on out. Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Bucks and Reds. This was rock solid. This is a fine, fine baseball game. James McDonald was in control. They scored some runs early. Got him a little breathing room. And he did the rest. Joel Hanrahan puts a cap on it. This is a good, solid win for the Bucks against a very good baseball team, a first place, first place baseball team. Good stuff on Memorial Day. 12 save for Hanrahan. A couple of pitches did the job. McDonald now four and two, as the Pirates are at 500. And now let's send it down to Rob Antique.